Good evening. Welcome to tonight's meeting of the Nashua Board of Education's Human Resources Committee at the Nashua High School boardrooms. It is, yes, today is April 29th at 5.33, um, and I'm calling this meeting to order. May we begin with a roll call, Ms. Bishop? 5.33, I said. So roll call is Ms. Giglio is here. Uh, Mr. Johnson, Ms. Raymond, Ms. Darling are not here, but Ms. Bishop is. I will be filling in and making the quorum. Okay, great. Um, okay, so we have a pretty hefty agenda tonight, but we're going to start with um, the last item, which is an administrative recommendation. Oh, no, we meant do that at the full board meeting. Oh, Push then. That oh, okay. I thought you wanted to do it now. Okay. <laughs> oh, they have to stay anyway. That's right. Okay. 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 Um, fine. So we're not going to switch the order. And we're going to start with the HR update from Mr. Baus. Um, and um, do you want to share some of it with us? Certainly. Um, so looking at the job openings, and I did the openings for next school year, uh, we do have uh, a, a handful of long-term sub-teacher positions open for the remainder of this year, uh, mainly for filling in for leaves and everything. But we are actively... Uh, turning the page and moving to the 24-25 school year. Um, the first agenda the items on there are the teachers. Um, when I gave you guys this on, I believe I completed it on Thursday last week, uh, we did have some movement on some positions, so that 56 is now 47. Oh, um, so those openings did go down. Um, just to break down real quick, elementary moved from 28 to 25. Middle is now 19 to 16. Uh, and then the high school is now down to six. Great work. Um, so we are actively moving. Uh, on the downside of that, we did get a couple resignations today uh, for some teachers for next at the end of the school year. Um, just It's kind of common with... Uh, I almost called it winter break with spring recess uh, where teachers come back and they give us their official notice usually in the first couple of days of uh, spring recess. So that's kind of uh, normal for us, but we'll get those posted ASAP. Yeah, we don't have an update. Uh, they didn't get through. They didn't okay. get through yet. We just got them today. So um, you'll see them on the next board. Okay. Um, so we'll be opening those up. Um, the next couple of agenda items are pretty stagnant until you go down to uh, – Secretaries, uh, the two the secretary, we currently have one opening. We did have two resignations um, today that we received, so there's going to be two more that are posted for that. Uh, and then the last two bullets just kind of go over the retirees for the 23-24 uh, school year, which is 24. That is uh, just about average to what we usually retain minus the COVID year. And then the teacher resignations as of current are 29, but as I just mentioned, mm -hmm. it's kind of counting, so... So I have a question. The 29 teacher resignations do not include the retire the 24 retirees. That is correct. Now, how does the 29 um, jive with other years in terms of resignations? Is it high? Uh, no, I would say it's pretty pretty even. Um, the resignations also um, it, it it tends to pick up this time of year because people are just getting approved by their boards and things. Um, so, yeah, I would say it's, it's pretty average for okay. uh, year over year. Hey, does anyone have any other questions for Mr. Bose? Um, okay, so the next item on the agenda is the Brentwood Coordinator Job Description. So we're looking for approval of the Brentwood Coordinator position. Um, as we know, the Brentwood program is growing. Um, currently, the administration over there is one um, building principal um, that services both Brentwood and the preschool, and there's a preschool coordinator. Um, and just on reflection uh, over the um, basis of the last year that we're requiring more administrative oversight, um, to help out, especially with Brentwood. Um, so if currently if the building principal's dealing with a preschool issue, there's no supervision at Brentwood, or if there's an issue at Brentwood that's taking the building administrator all day to heal, um, handle, um, there's lack of support at the preschool. So the Brentwood um, coordinator is actually um, an old position, quite honestly, So it was, but was never filled for a number of years. Um, so, um, 
and Greg Warren just turned into the principal, but originally it used to be the Brentwood coordinator when it was off-site and in different places. So um, his role has transformed a little. So we're just bringing this back. Um, so it's not in, in modified, essentially. Uh, Basically the same. It's the, the same. same aspect of it. Um, it's also noteworthy that um, this position will be funded through a special revenue. So this is um, the out-of-district tuitions that um, the students who come into that program, essentially their tuitions will be paying for this program. So it won't, will not come out of the operation uh, operating budget. Um, and as you kind of read through it, it's just a management coordinate offsite special ed education programs, uh, working with students, uh, program behavior management approaches, um, over, observes, evaluates, supervises program staff, um, works on new referrals and transitions of students, um, acts as a, the program's spokesperson. So it, it's really co the coordination there. But it really provides more oversight in that building. Um, the, between the preschool and Brentwood, it's close to 250 to 300 students. So it, it's a big program, and we just need that infrastructure to support all of our students. Um, will that mean that there'll be an opening for someone to oversee the preschool? Um, that positions are currently filled. Oh, it, oh, I so thought, I thought Mr. Have, Warren was doing both. No, uh, so Greg Warren is the principal of like the Franklin School and mostly in charge of the Brentwood and then Caitlin Burns is the right, preschool right. coordinator and we also have to think where with the preschool coordinator that that role has changed a lot too two years ago when all the preschools were in all the elementary schools that was a different job description because there was building principals and that was more the coordinating and now that all the preschools are in one building like her job functions have changed a lot because you don't have the other building principals who are helping with evaluations or parents uh, in communications or that aspect of it. So their job is, is definitely changed over the last two years. I'm going to open it at Franklin. Does anyone have any questions on the Brentwood coordinator? Tether, do you have any questions? Uh, no, thank you for asking. Um, I was on the board back when that position existed when Brentwood was on a different site. And to me, it makes sense to have someone doing the overseeing of that. So. Okay. The next position is an English language learner coordinator for K-8. to So in our operating budget, we talked about new positions in the ELL um, as part of the recommendations from the DOJ. So this is an um, uh, ELL coordinator specializing in K-8 to provide some um, infrastructure and support to our ELL program and our, our teachers. So um, it's very similar to other coordinators in the district, but again, we're looking to build out that infrastructure in the ELL department um, to support both our teachers and more importantly, our students. Questions on that? Okay, next we have the middle school special education coordinator. Yeah. So this um, last year we came forward with the elementary special ed education coordinator um, and really the transformation of making sure our central office was more um, site-based. So we last year um, created two elementary special ed coordinators so that, again, building principals had more support from central office. We were in more buildings. So this is a similar coordinator that would support um, mostly McCarthy Middle School because there's going to be so many students over there, but also be available to fairgrounds and in Penichuk Middle School. Um, we definitely heard a lot of positive feedback on having our coordinators in central office in the building, supporting teachers and um, and building administrators. So we want to make sure, again, we build out this infrastructure um, at the middle school level, um, especially looking at McCarthy with so many students who are going to be in one place that they have um, a coordinator on, on the ground in the building um, supporting the, um, the, the special education programs. Okay, any questions on that? Um, okay, then we're moving on to tonight's personnel recommendations. And we have, thanks to Mr. Baus, we have like a two-sided list of um, people who um, have been, who've submitted for leave of absence or um, for new positions and then several resignations. Um, 
And um, if, does anyone have any questions on those? If not, I'm looking for a motion to approve the recommendation. Um, I'll make the motion. I have a, a question. Do we need a motion on the job descriptions as well? Um, oh, yeah, we do, right. Should we, we can go back and do each of those first. Or, right. Okay, yeah. All right, yeah. I'm a little fuzzy tonight. I was playing soccer before I came here. I'm, I'm not. Um, okay, so starting with the Brentwood coordinator job description, um, I'm looking for a motion to approve that job description. I move to approve the Brentwood job, uh, the Brentwood coordinator job description. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Are you voting now or no? Mr. I can Special. I can still vote, but let me write it down. Raymond made that. Sorry, like usurping all of the time. Ms. Julio seconded. Passes three zero. Next, I'm looking at the English language learner coordinator for K to eight. I'm looking for a motion to approve that job description. I'll make the motion. Second. Vote, please. Oh, I was kind of waiting. All in favor? Aye. aye. Thank you. All right, aye. <laughs> and then um, I'm looking for at the middle school special education coordinator position. I'm looking for a motion to approve that. Uh, so moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries 3-0. Okay. Then we can go back to the personnel recommendations. If everyone's had a chance to look at them, does anyone have a question? No? My, I guess my question is more in relation to the um, memo that went with it regarding um, teacher vacancies, et cetera. Um, and so I'm just curious if the job o if the job openings memo and the personnel recommendations memo are aligned. So like on the job openings, it says that we have um, 56 teachers that we're looking for for the uh, upcoming school year. Does that include the positions of the people who resigned or are on leave of absences in this personnel recommendations? Yep. Yep, it absolutely does. Um, I did mention as well um, that 56 is now down to 47 with some moves in the last couple of days. Oh, okay, because that, that was my second But yes, question. they do. I apologize include, for being late. No, no problem at all. They do uh, include the resignations on here and, and the nominations as well. Okay. All of those numbers have come down. Oh, that's fantastic. Right, yeah. Um, and then I guess my second question, and I apologize if it was asked earlier, um, is whether or not any of these people... Um, any, if we have any existing staff who are still in the process of moving into any of these positions? Uh, yes, we do still have, we're actually on our third round of transfers right now. Okay. So, yeah. So, the numbers are going to sh shimmy some more between now and the end of the school year? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Uh, did I make the motion to approve the personnel? Um, I was just going to ask for one. <laughs> I'll make the motion. Okay. Second. We'll make this easy for you, Ms. Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> so how you know why from. I wasn't taking notes and running the meeting at the same time. I know it's so hard to do that. It's it's like impossible. Um okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Finally, um we have an administrative recommendation. Grab my paper here. Um to elect Tricia Kaufman to the position of New Searles principal for the 2024-2025 school year at an annual salary of $103,300. Um, do we have any questions for her? Would she like to talk to us or? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to tell us something about yourself? 
Sure. Um, do you have any questions or you want me to just? Um, I don't have a question, but after you tell us a little bit about yourself. I was going to say, like if you could give us a brief overview of your experience. Uh, you know, she was an assistant principal in Pelham and then most recently the last four years uh, an assistant principal at New Searles doing wonderful and remarkable things. And it's we're happy to make this recommendation tonight because we know she'll do well, but we'll give her an opportunity to highlight and showcase her talents. No, um, yeah, I'm very excited to be here um, talking about this position. Um, as Dr. Andre said, I did before prior to New Searles, which I've been here for four years. I was at Pelham Elementary School for four years as an assistant principal. Um, so it was quite a change in culture coming from a school of about 900 kids to to New Searles. But I have definitely found this is more of a culture that I enjoy working with um, as opposed to a big school. Um, prior to that, I worked at Pinkerton Academy, so another very large school um, in the special ed department, um, and before that in the guidance department at Pinkerton. So um, definitely seen different sizes, different ages, and New Searles definitely is the gem that everybody talks about and told me about. Um, so I'm really excited um, about the potential of this position. Does anyone have any questions for her? I, I do. I always have questions. Um, I just, going from an assistant principal to a principal, um, I guess my question is, how has your um, experience with, um, like, discipline and behavior management, um, how is that going to impact the shifting of roles for you? Um, I think, well, I mean, quite frankly, Helene and I work pretty closely together, and we work, do a lot of the discipline in, in together. Um, it really, I know typically sometimes that falls more on the assistant principal, but we deal with a lot of it together. And I think as far as discipline, I mean, it's, it's all about connections with kids. And we've actually worked hard this year as far as trying to find ways, how do we address whatever we're seeing and how can you creatively look at what's going on and match what's happening with I don't even want to call it a consequence, but sometimes it is a consequence, but um, really looking at behavior and saying, okay, what's behind the behavior? Connecting with kids, getting to know them, their stories, and what, you know, what did their morning look like? Today, it was, we had a lot of conversations about, okay, what did last week look like for them? And that's typically why we're seeing what we're seeing, and we know that, but it also, understanding all that helps you address behaviors. Um, we've done a lot of books with kids, you know, if it, whether it be reading a story about kindness and helping them understand what they're doing, you know, wasn't appropriate and why, and you hurt feelings. And, you know, we've just tried to be creative and in some sense of working with kids because we're here to teach them. And some kids get more social emotional peace and at home, some don't. And I think we need to really fill in those gaps if they're there. Um, and again, it's all about connections and really understanding where the kids are coming from and what they need. Thank you. Um, just a follow up. Can you speak a little bit about um, some of the, the connections and the partnerships that you've made with parents in the community to help kind of foster, um, you know, the behaviors that you're hoping that our kids can exhibit while they're in school? Right. Yeah. I would say over the last couple of years, um, I've really gotten more involved with the parents and in the community. And it definitely has made everything a lot easier. So when I was hired, we were in the midst of COVID, which was, as we all know, very challenging. And we were trying to teach kids and keep them alive, we thought at the time. Um, so there was really less of that community parent piece in the way it is now. Um, so really having the PTO in full swing and having events and things and really getting to know parents better, know families better, spending more time with them and seeing them face to face has, really helped because when you have that partnership and again the connections with kids but the connections with parents it's a lot easier to kind of partner up and say okay we're doing this in school so please don't do you don't need to do anything at home we got it covered or parents saying hey I want to try this at home too so let's all speak the same language you know we'll do what you're doing you can do what we're doing so um, I don't know if that answers your question but that's kind of I think what the last couple of years have has been helpful. Ms. Bishop, do you have any questions? Well, you're, you're walking into a fantastic school, and I'm really excited to see you at the helm of it and, and watching our students grow and our programs grow, and just really, I'm excited for you. Thank you. I'm 
very, very excited. It's, it's an incredible school. It really is. I had the pleasure of being on the interview committee, and I'm so happy to see you here tonight. Thank you. So, um, I'm looking for a motion. I'll make the motion uh, to, hold on, I have to read it properly. Where'd it go? I move that we um, uh, elect or promote uh, Trisha Kaufman to the position of New Searles Principal for the 2024-2025 school year at an annual salary of $103,300. Second. Um, can I just say how pleased I am that we are promoting from within and having that uh, you know, continuity for the community over there? Thank you. Um, okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations. Thank you very much. We'll see you at the full board meeting for yes. everyone to say. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Hey, um, I would like to go into um, a non-public session um, citing RSA 91A32A. Um, Thank I'll, you. I'll call that a motion and second it. Yeah. Uh, who do you need still in the room? Um, I know Dr. Andre is going to stay in the room. Yep. Um, so. Second it. Okay, great. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 And we are adjourned at 6.07 uh, p.m. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes.